The mesopelagic zone, also called the twilight zone, goes from between 200 and 1,000 meters depth. We have not that much of species diversity, but we get tons of mesopelagic fish. To understand how I want to study it, you need to understand how these fish move. My name is Anne Gru Vera Salvanes and I am a professor at the University of Bergen teaching marine ecological uh, field methods. When I came to Bergen, it was a period with a, too little field work for the students, so then I happened to say that when they are graduating in marine biology, they can't do that only on paperwork. And then the head of the department said, OK, make a course then. 25 years I've been teaching. One of my PhD students is, is on board. She is very enthusiastic and motivated. Maasfjorden is a fjord that has been extensively studied by the University of Bergen and especially Anne Gro. She's been going there every year with a student cruise for at least 10 years. I did my PhD in Maasfjorden and so I knew the fjord and I, know, and I knew that, okay, it's six hours from Bergen, flat sea, we don't get seasick. If you want to study dynamics and development and progression in, 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 in the ecosystem, then we have to go to the same place where we meet the same populations. Most people bad for taking our one atmosphere with us, so yeah. you won't notice the pressure change going mm -hmm. in the water. We've been there consistently since 2011, and we have gotten a lot of mesopelagic fish since the beginning. The mesopelagic zone, also called the twilight zone, goes from between 200 and 1,000 meters depth. On my field trips, we use acoustics to spot the densities of the mesopelagic fishes. This is like probably the coolest thing ever. We send sound, and then anything that has a different density than water reflects that sound back. Basically, when we send sound and we get the reflection, we get a picture of sound. I'm trying to put biology into her work. I'm interested in how the mesopelagic community interacts with benthic organisms. Benthic communities are anything that are on the seafloor. So I'm planning to study is there energy moving from the mesopelagics to benthic organisms, more specifically big predators such as benthic fish? To understand how I want to study it, you need to understand how these mesopelagic fish move. Mesopelagic organisms actually conduct a dial vertigo migration, which is the biggest migration on the planet and it happens daily. What they do is they feed in the upper layers at night and when it's dark and then they, when it gets daylight, they migrate down and escape from visual predators. Since they eat at the top and then they migrate down, they move energy from the top of the water column to deeper depths. Does the energy then further travel by direct contact to benthic predators? The idea is that if they meet a bottom that is in their way, for example, the side of the fjord they don't move away, but they just get trapped there. And the question is, how much energy flows that way? The more we look at it, the more we know about it. That's why I'm really happy to be on board this ship, because there is two submersibles and there is one ROV. And the camera footage will give me a good idea if they're actually there or not. And if I'm lucky, I will also see the, the interaction maybe on, on the footage. We will be running a, a transect, so a line of data collection with cameras and then also making a sound picture. This is really uh, very high tech compared to what I'm used to. I always like to think about it like this. When you walk through the forest, you have like an idea of the three-dimensional space you're in. And you can see far away, you can see to the next mountain. But if you would put your head underwater, 
there is not that far that you can see. So we rely on equipment like cameras or ROVs to get an understanding of what is there. Fieldwork is essential for being a good scientist in marine science. It's my opinion that you have to go to sea to, to learn. I think I grow so much when I do field work. Like, you, you just have to be more flexible in your thinking. And I love challenges. The more I learn, the less I think I know. That motivates my, my work. That's why I love to be teacher and doing research.